Well, hello there. So, what I have in front of me is an iBook G4. I am pretty sure you all know about the iBook G4 if you're watching this channel. It is a power PC machine before Apple started using Intel CPUs. The colors in the Apple, by the way, I put there myself. It's not a sticker. I actually put them uh, where the original white filter was. So yeah, it's a bar PC machine and this is gonna be kind of the protagonist of uh, my bar PC challenge. Sorry, my risk challenge. I'll be using a, a Sun Enterprise 250 too, which yeah. And really there's not much to say about the iBook G4. This is not gonna be a rambly uh, video, at least I expect it not to be since I don't really want it to be. It's gonna be just an overview of the system. This is a 1.42 gigahertz uh, G4 iBook, it is, which means it is the fastest iBook ever made. It is 14 inch. Look at that, Still open. it still opens like the day came out of the factory. Now, as soon as I opened it up, and some of you Apple fanboys will have noticed uh, the keyboard. Keyboard is translucent. Well, that's not a 1.42 gigahertz, is it? Yeah, it is. I just swapped the keyboard from another iBook, which I got with this one. So I got this one, which is complete, uh, plus another one for spares, which is a 1 gigahertz, is the generation before this one. That other one uh, came working, but without a hard drive. This one came uh, with a broken hard drive and I opened it up to get the keyboard out. It was also missing pretty much all of the screws and the top and bottom shields. So yeah, I opened it up and I think I shorted something out on the motherboard and well, now it's dead. Great. Another. Well, I don't care, I bought it for spares for this. Also because it came with this one. Uh, they were both 30 euro shipped, so 20 euro for both computers and 10 euro for the shipping. Now, what can I say about this machine that, haven't, that hasn't been said before? Well, ports, let's take a look at the machine itself, I don't know. Ports have 56k modem, yes, 56k modem in a machine from 2005 I don't know 10100 Ethernet Apple you could have put gigabit Ethernet on that but uh, I don't really care this was made for this was kind of a consumer machine Firewire 400 two USB 2.0 ports could have done that in the Power Mac G4 couldn't you Apple uh, yeah Mini VGA, so you need a dongle to plug an external display onto this. At least you don't need dongles for the rest of the stuff. And headphone output. This thing has no sound input apart from the built-in microphone. Oh, and a Kensington lock. The we have the vent for the hard drive. And I was gonna ramble on about. Uh, I don't care. I'm not gonna ramble. So in the front, we've got a whole lot of nothing except for the. Uh, display latch release which you press and the thing pops open you can see the latch on the display is magnetic so there's this thing's magnetized and then there's a little hook there that comes down and if you close the lid slowly the button will pop will will make a little well, will pop in and then click that but when you're normally using it, the lid, the hook, comes uh, down at the same rate as you're closing the display. So you can pre you pretty much don't notice it closing. So, well, that was a bad example, but like that, nothing clicks or anything like that. So there's minimum wear on that. Then we have on the other side, a whole lot of nothing here. We've got a super drive, uh, 
which is Apple's way of marketing, well, a CD-ROM drive, which, well, CD-DVD-ROM drive, which also reads and writes pretty much everything except for DVD-RAMs, but I do believe there's a hack uh, to run that. We have DCN port, which is a 2.5 millimeter uh, jack with an outer thing there, an outer ring, which the outer ring is only used for the little indicator LED. I don't have the, the original charger. These things came out. Uh, these, sorry, these things um, I bought without charger. So I made myself a little charger with a 2.5 millimeter jack and I didn't even bother connecting the outer barrel. On the back, we've got a proper vent, a proper freaking vent in an Apple laptop. What do you know? Uh, and the hinge, and that's it. Let's look at the bottom. We have missing feet here and here. We have two rubber feet on the back. There should be four, of course. We have the battery, which isn't looking so good. This one is actually from an older iBook. Uh, both iBooks came with batteries. And the older one worked. As you can see, it is fully charged right now. The newer one doesn't. So, hmm, I don't know. Then we have here all of that signed by Apple in California. California! Assembled in China. Yeah. That's and all of your regulation stuff there. We have some uh, brushed screws there and the crack that always happens in every single iBook out there. Yeah, and I think that's it for the outside of the computer. Let's take a look at the inside. We have, let's What's the black spot? See, the thing is, you look at this thing wrong and it gets either scratched or dirty. Yeah, that's the thing with a white, glossy, plastic product. So we have trackpad. This is the, the best trackpad that is on an iBook, uh, which supports touch, uh, multi-touch, sorry. Uh, Apple, I think, called it gestures back in the day. So it supports two finger scrolling, Three finger tapping, two finger tapping, it supports pinch to zoom and all that. We have a big ass button here and that is one button, that's it. For secondary click you either do control click or you do a uh, two finger tap. We have a keyboard which has, <sighs> it is like a modern ThinkPad keyboard, it has literally nothing, nothing of use apart from your keys and the function keys and that's it well it does have home and page down page up keys this is an ANSI keyboard so American keyboard the other one I had uh, the other iBook has an ISO keyboard and seriously the enter key I absolutely love ISO keyboards I just use them on everything I can but the enter key on this thing was like this thick so it was horrible. That's a horrible ISO keyboard. So in that case, I usually like ISO just because of the big enter key. So it, in ISO, usually it covers this part. But yeah, whatever. We have the model right there, iBook G4. What a thought. Stereo speakers, which actually don't sound that bad for a laptop. By the way, let's let's turn it on. So power button. Optical drive making noises, and you won't see an Apple logo on this display at all. You just won't. So yeah, up here uh, we have the latch thing, hook thing. These Power PC machines take a lot uh, to turn on the display. As you can see, there's Yaboot booting up. Wonderful. Of course, I'm not going to use this thing with a 10-year-old operating system. That is Leopard, which is the last system, well, last OS X that runs on this. And I refuse to call it MacOS or MacOS or whatever they have changed it. Now it is OS X. That's it, OS X. Now this is going to take a long, long, long time to load. 
because I just threw in uh, threw in the biggest working hard drive that I had, which was a 20 gigabyte IDE drive, and that is one slow piece of crap. So yeah, I think that's about it for the hardware of the computer. There's really nothing else. Well, you have these uh, LEDs integrated into the keyboard. The numlock LED. Sorry, I have to press F and and then numlock. Look at that. Was it me or did it just change color? Ah, whatever. So yeah, that's that. We have a mouse now. It really takes a long time to boot. Maybe either that or I'm just used uh, to SSDs, which I'm going to put one in there. And that's going to be a little bit of a surprise because it's not what you expect. Uh, so yeah, let's put in my... Ooh, there I am. Uh, let's put in my user and password. let it put up slow as all heck and it's just because of the hard drive you can probably hear it if I yeah that's one slow chugging hard drive but yeah there's my wallpaper hasn't loaded yet Come on. So I'm running Debian on this thing. I hate Debian these days, but what are you gonna do? I'm running Sid, uh, which which is the latest uh, version. Well, it is unstable. So Debian unstable is still getting updates for PowerPC, even if Debian stable 9.0 isn't supported. So that's nice. Let's see. Let's open up a terminal. Uh, well, yeah. No, whatever. I have done it 30 times already. Let's see the specs of the machine. We have Debian Unstable. It's a PowerBook 6.7. Running kernel 4.11. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I have a lot of packages installed, but whatever. 1024 by 768. Yeah, that's that's one awful display. The display on this thing is awful. It's absolutely awful. The viewing angles, I mean, on the sides they're not that bad, but vertically they're horrible. You have to tilt the display exactly at the angle you're looking at it. The well, it has a 7447A. CPU made by Motorola or PC, of course, also known as a G4, at 1.42 gigahertz, and it has an AMD Mobility Radeon 9550, which is quite a powerful graphics card for the time. Actually, it is pretty much the same as a desktop 9550. It only has some different power states and better pinning on the chip, and yeah, running out of space really. So you've seen the machine. Has one gig of RAM. I don't want. I want to take this on on one take. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.